Uh, that was great. What was that? That was the opening verse of the Magnificat on the ninth tone by German composer Samuel Scheidt. So that's excellent. Uh, I'm here with David Kazmier, who is the curator of pipe organs at Oberlin. I, it's amazing that Oberlin has a curator of pipe organs. How many pipe organs do we have and what do you do? There are 34 pipe organs on the campus. Um, my job is like a family practice physician. I have a little bit of uh, instruments who are newborns and some that are a little bit older and no one's in palliative care, so I'm doing my job, but a lot of it is just tuning, regulation, uh, general maintenance and working with the facilities to keep everything and everyone moving and playing smoothly. Uh, this organ that you're at is, is a pretty special instrument. Now, most of our uh, audience is listening, but we'll also post a video of this online. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about this organ and, and why it's so special? This instrument was built in 1983 by John Brumbau, uh, one of uh, the 20th century's great uh, American organ builders. It utilizes the tuning system called quarter comma mean tone tuning and is unique amongst organs in that it has split sharps to accommodate those uh, unique interval tuning systems that we find in quarter comma mean tone. Well on a normal piano keyboard there are 12 notes in an octave. Mm -hmm. Not here, there are 15. I'm going to start at C and go up. So middle C. C sharp, D, D sharp, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, G sharp, A, A sharp, B flat, B, and C an octave higher. Wow, that's crazy. So if, if I heard right, that means that what we think of, of as being the inharmonically equivalent notes in equal temperament, like D sharp and E flat, always the flat version was higher than the sharp version. Correct. And as they are oriented on this keyboard, the more commonly used of those anharmonic notes E flat, G sharp, and B flat, they're at the front of the key. And behind it, and a little bit higher, is the less commonly used one. So you have D sharp behind E flat, you have A flat behind G sharp, and you have A sharp behind B flat. So I wonder, maybe, um, could you just play some chords with the right and wrong black notes so we can hear the difference? Sure. Uh, e major mm -hmm. is E, G sharp, and B. This is the right version with the G sharp. And, and that, as we listen to that, that G sharp is significantly lower. That, that E to G sharp interval is significantly smaller compared to our modern piano. Correct. The thirds on this organ and in quarter comma mean tone tuning are left pure. So they don't beat as much. If you listen to that, there's no oscillation. The thing that gets interesting in quarter comma mean tone, to make those thirds pure, you end up with fifths that are narrow, narrower. So we, yeah, so we hear a little bit of the, the beats in that fifth. Can you, can you hold that fifth out a bit longer? That's that like wah, 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 yes. wah effect we hear in it, yeah. You don't hear that in equal temperament, which is twelfth comma mean tone. Pure third. Now I'm going to play it with the wrong note. Hold on to something. Oh, that's painful. So that was E, A flat, flat. and B. Yes. Wow, could you just play the E and A flat together? And now the E and G sharp. That's so much better. That's, that is amazing. And, um, so, but then that lets you get, I imagine, other, other places that would use A flat. Like, can you play an A flat major on this organ? You can play an A flat major. So, and yes. it's really, it's quite nice, actually. Yes. 
It's very sweet. Now I can use the wrong key, in that case, D sharp. <laughs> which, is, which is a little bit, little bit diminished. What yes. if we used both G sharp and D sharp there? So what if... G sharp and D sharp. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> it, it gets really crazy. So normally in uh, like a quarter comma mean tone, mm -hmm. The farther you get away from the normal keys, the weirder it sounds. Right. Is that still true with this organ, or, or because of the split keys, do, are you able to keep things sounding normal-ish? Well, with the split keys, you have more options to keep intervals that use a pure third running. Mm -hmm. um, so with the option of F, to F sharp mm -hmm. to A sharp, that can be you know, pure and comfortable because the difference between F sharp and B flat. Yeah. The wolf tone that we have in this. So the wolf tone is usually where you put all the left over fifth change the, from, from, from adjusting the fifths to be smaller. You still, have, you still have one fifth that has to be way out. Right. And normally that's between uh, G sharp and E flat. Yes, so if we listen to that G sharp and E flat. Yeah, and it's, and it's called the wolf because the it, wolf, it kind of howls. It howls. <laughs> there's, there's no way of getting around that. The, the theory practice of this time is through, through the use of these pure thirds, it strengthens in some keys the function of the dominant going into the tonic because you have pure thirds in the dominant and you also have it really pure in the tonic. When could, you, could you maybe just play some tonic dominant tonics for us and tell us what keys you're playing them in? All right, so tonic dominant tonic. This is C major. The weight of G major in that case really has uh, strength, but it also sets you up for, you really enjoy your resolution when you have those crunching uh, dissonances like the arrival at the cadence just goes <gasps> and that tension you hear in the music of this time period as well. David, could I give it a try? Of I'm course just you really can. curious to like <laughs> to explore this. And okay, you may have to remind me which ones are the sharps and which ones are the flats. So I'm gonna try playing something in E major. Okay. And I think you said the, the, the part of the G sharp A closest to me is the G sharp. Correct. Okay. So in other words, I can have a beautiful E major triad right. like this. And then the uh, the front of the E flat D sharp. The, wait, don't talk about it. The front of it is the E flat, right? Correct. And the back is the D sharp. Correct. So if I'm playing in E major and I want to play one five one, mm -hmm. then my one chord I have to use the front part. Right. Of the, the G sharp A flat. Yes. But in my five chord I have to use the back part. Correct. Of my and if I get that wrong, it's going to be really spectacular. Quite like there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a much smaller target area yes. for these. Is this an E down here on the bottom? Yes. Oh, no. Short right. octave. Thank you. Yes. Got it. We should probably point out the short octave <laughs> yeah. to them. So, oh, that's great. You know, the question that we get all the time when we're teaching beginning students mm -hmm. is why do we need a D sharp and an E flat? And this this really answers that. Yes. We we can hear right like so if I play C minor using C E flat G, G. But if I play C D sharp G that's just it's just that's just out. It's, and the body reacts accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> and that difference between the D sharp and the E flat. I mean that's that's like what quarter, quarter less than a quarter. Tone. It's less than a quarter. Yeah. Uh, it really gets into micro tonal adjustments. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we use a specialized tuning machine to make sure that we're getting right to the core of where that pitch needs to be because there is a huge difference.
Oh, David, this is amazing. Uh, uh, do you want to play something for us to take us out? Okay.